buy a waist shirt for right now.
parts to address to the class of 2019. And they are very few. The other night at baccalaureate, the pastor spoke about a verse in Philippians that is extremely interesting to people no matter what their religion, and even if they don't have any religion at all. It is a verse about keeping your mind nice and pure and clean, about thinking only about good things. If things are good, if they are right, if they are true, think about these things. Graduates, you live in a world that brings bad news almost every day if you let it. I have watched you go through hard times, graduates. I remember in particular the week last year when we were planning after the terrible shooting at Marjorie Stone and Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, a um, peaceful sit-in and demonstration in the gym when we got the terrible news that Mr. D had passed away. I remember your faces that week. It was a lot, but you didn't break. Cracks came, but you didn't break. And that is because what you have been filled with up until today is love. The love of your family, the moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, and foster families here tonight who loved you when you were tiny. The teachers who took over when you were a little bigger. The love of people has filled you up. And hopefully, you will now continue on a path of at least some goodness and kindness. You will turn to good things. That is what your education is supposed to teach you. That there is a place in life for following the rules. That there is a place in life for listening to people who have the wisdom of age and who care enough to come here every day and try to put a little of it into your head. You will look back at David Crowley when these days are long past and realize how much love your teachers put into the instruction that drove you crazy. And in the future, you will face hard times. I guarantee it. Every family has hard times. This world has hard times. And I want you to have enough goodness and love in you that when the hard times come, you may crack, but the love that seeps out heals the wounds and can never break. It has been an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be your principal. Thank you, class of 2019.
Our experiences have shaped us into the people we are today. We have the last class to graduate this school that experience the same. After that moment, we became a class of the class. A class that endlessly advocated for what it wanted and for the changes that we made in the school. We took the time to form bonds and education and work with several people to achieve the goals of our life. Not only is this class unique, but so is our experience here. We face the challenge of the poor leader in our first year of as well as the unseen administration of freshman year that has been disappearing and having an impact on the first year. We overcame these struggles by realizing that strong leadership is necessary for the And we took on that leadership role as best we could. This role is identified in Superintendent's Advisory Committee, a new group formed by Dr. Hockey to sit down with him at lunch once a month to discuss the issues we saw at our school. Around the event, Dr. Hockey asked us if we would take on the challenge of giving a tour to send them to the Commission of Education. We showed them the science labs, technology, and classes we had at our school, as well as revealing the shine created by the big time of working this community. We created a PowerPoint to present to the Commissioner and the Senate, hoping to get us to grant the need to the goal. The Commissioner was moved by our heart, dedication, pride, and the ability to sell the soul of it. This group, this class, is a huge reason the that the District will be receiving a large grant to help renovate this building or build a more. Not many people can say that their class is responsible for the soul class in this group. This class is such a wonderful, bright group of students. Just Wednesday night, the Spencer Exchange Exchange Club held the annual annual seminar society in the beginning, in which 21 of my 89 classmates and members attended. That's about 23 to 6 percent of the young men who are members of the team, and a quarter of the entire class. Mr. Chairman, I can say 95 percent confidence that 23.6 is a big proportion of our class. We have students who are all over the country after high school. Between high Ivy League school, technical colleges, liberal arts colleges, West Coast schools, Southern colleges, or even going to local colleges. Some are even going to the military or the West Coast. This class will do so many amazing things, and I cannot wait to see the impacts that we have on this world. There is no better way to describe my experience here tonight. The experience that, experiences I've had at the school have taught me some of my nice, most valuable lessons. I will never forget the type of sports teams, the small classes, the national <laughs> Sporting events, the laughs and jokes of my classmates, and the stories from my teachers. I'll forever remember the support I received from my teammates and the children of my grandma and dad. The friendships I made, both respected and unexpected, messages, and how good messages, and this came and this came taking our copies out of them. Bless you, Pat, and I'm just going to take it, of course. This school will forever be a part of my family. I will never forget my experience here. It has really shaped me for the first time. I anticipated this night for the last four years and never met anything on this day. I would like to finish with a quote from an unknown book. It reads, Do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow from our children. To me, this is exactly how our unique class is at the school. We're replacing a mediocre environment with savings. That is how the other classes in the old administration left us. However, our unique class took the earth and we borrowed before us and completely reshaped it. We are passing on a new building, a voice that we hope resonates throughout Valley forever, <laughs> and a fire that we hope stays with throughout all the following classes. I'm glad the young men and women sitting up here tonight had the opportunity to change this school and this community forever. Congratulations, you guys. You have made a bigger impact on this community than we can even begin to realize. I look at the future and I do not fear, as there is no doubt in my mind that we can change much more than just our community. I wish you all the best of luck and all future endeavors. Thank you so much, Jan. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Hockey, our superintendent, to address the class and the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, so 
great to see everyone this evening. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed getting to know these young men and women in the class of 2019 this year. Uh, a year ago, I sat here with my wife, and uh, we were uh, very nervous, very anxious, hopeless getting here. And I have to say, uh, young men and women in the class of 2019 are a group of people that uh, I want to talk to tonight and tell them, each and every one of you, I am very, very proud of you. Very proud of you. Uh, the lessons you've learned over your four years here for being proud of you, proud of you for home, this is your home. It will always be your home. And please know that everything you did in these halls and on the campus will be appreciated by everyone. How do I know that it's probably a thousand guys on this time? But this room is full. It is full. It is full of love. It is full of support. It is full of care. And these people in this audience this evening have invested a great deal of their time, energy, and passion in making sure you have the opportunity to do so rightly deserve. And uh, you have not shied away from a challenge. And instead of seeing it as a challenge, taking it as an opportunity to learn. And that's not easy at any age. Some people look at failure as a situation that they can't get past. You've never seen failure or a challenge as something you can't get past. You're just trying to figure out how can I work this so I can keep moving forward. And uh, the resiliency in this group has been something I truly enjoy uh, observing and watching throughout this year with you. I asked to speak tonight. Tonight is your night. It is your celebration. But before you leave, I ask only one more thing of you, please. Class of 2019, please stand and applaud the audience, because in this audience are community members, family members, aunties, uncles, grandmas, and grandpas, and so many of the people that have helped you come who you are that I'd like to recognize. Please stand and give them an applause. Too often we get so nervous and we're in such a rush to get the diplomas and get to the final pass at hand that we forget to stop and say, hey, thanks for that. And I thought it would only be fitting that we pump the brakes for one second prior to the diplomas and say thank you to everyone here this evening as we celebrate our class of 2019. So without further ado, let's get this party started. Great job and enjoy your evening. Thank you so much, Dr. Bobby. At this time, it is traditional to hear remarks from the student who, after four years of study, ended up with the second highest average in the class. Our class salutatorian, Matthew Gibbons. Welcome and celebrating the graduation of the class of 2019. I want to thank all of you who have supported me, my friends, family, and David Crowdy faculty who have inspired me, had patience with me believe in me and talk. Tonight is where the journey end, journey as a class ends, but not the memory of the amazing experience that I had at Carnegie. We had so many good times, but the best of my memories come from the band program. At first I was reluctant to join the band, but it ended up being one of the best decisions I made in high school. During my freshman year, the band program was in decline, and it was attempting to rebuild. Over the last few years, most students began to join the program, including myself. What was most inspiring to me was becoming a part of the band rise to success again. It has been an honor to be a part of the rebuilding process, and I hope to see it become even more successful in the following years. Being part of the brand, band program has opened my eyes to so many different things. One name that as long as you work hard towards your goals and persevere, you can rebuild and grow every day. 
There will be battles in life, there will be obstacles, there will be things that are out of your comfort zone. When we take on the hard things, the obstacles, that is when we succeed. We will take this lesson into college and into the rest of my life. My hope is that you will live your best life. The best things in life sometimes come out of the most uncomfortable situations. And I encourage everyone to take these risks as they lead to something new. Thank you. A pleasure and privilege to invite our valedictorian who graduates with the highest J grade point average in the class of 2019, Mr. O. Faden. Yeah. Friends, family, staff, and most importantly, the class of 2019. I'd like to speak for the entire class and say thank you to those that have worked effortlessly to get us to where we are today. We are extremely grateful. I'd also like to thank our class advisors, Mr. Servant and Mr. Streeter, for working tirelessly with us for the past four years. And personally, I'd like to thank my parents, sister, and friends that have supported me throughout my high school journey. As many of us know, David County High School has offered its students a very unique experience. From the dedicated staff to the dynamic bonds that are made between students, it is an environment that encourages both learning and personal growth. I want to begin by taking a step back to freshman year, where I walked in three days late. At this time in Friday's history, the school is definitely not at its peak. I remember fighting for the opportunity with my family to attend school year with Dixon off the Friday. Looking back, I'm thankful for choosing David Friday because it has shaped me into the individual I am today. Our freshman year, we had a peaceful protest against the issues the school was facing, including the cutting of clubs and administrative problems. Flash forward to this year, and we are the last class that attended that school. I think what makes the class of 2019 so special is that we were able to see the growth and development of David Crowdy in school facing a great deal of hardship to one that was able to completely turn that around. We learned how to persevere and take action for change, which is something you can't really learn from a textbook. Many of us have gone to school with each other since kindergarten. We've grown up together and created inseparable bonds. With these bonds, we've created long-lasting memories. We look back on those memories as bonds, whether they were created from attending Friday night football games, student council conferences, band concerts, junior prom, senior dinner dance, or the countless other events we've had the opportunity to experience. Looking at my peers now, it is clear we are a special group of students. Freshman year, we broke out of our comfort zone. Sophomore year, we became involved. Junior year, we took charge. And senior year, we made our mark. To the class of 2019, I know for a fact there's an amazing thing. Whether you plan to attend college, become a member of the workforce, or join the armed forces, I'm confident you will impact this world in a positive way. Christopher Reed once said, so many of our dreams first seem impossible, then they seem improbable, and then when we summon the world, they seem to become inevitable. I believe, no matter how crazy each of our dreams are, the members of this class will be able to take them to fruition. We have left our legacy in David Crowley, and soon we'll bring it to the real world. I cannot wait to see what's in store for each and every one of us. Congratulations to the class of 2018. Thank you so much, Matt and Owen, for your excellent addresses today. At this time, we will move on to the presentation of scholarships and awards. I'd like to invite Mr. Robert Burkew, Sr. of the Permanent Scholarship Committee to the lectern to introduce the Permanent Scholarship Program, and we would like to give some scholarships. speech, but I'm going to cut it down to about five minutes. Right. On behalf of the uh, David Crowley Permanent Scholarship, I'd like to thank the class of 2019 and Elizabeth George for allowing us to be here this evening. 
25 years ago, the scholarship committee started. And in that time of the present, uh, we've given over one million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in scholarships. Next, to thank you to all the people in here, all the businesses throughout Spencer and East Brookfield that donate to this scholarship uh, fund. And we start around February and keep going. So still like to give that's fine, we'll take all the money you have. <laughs> um, but at that time also, um, we have a couple of people, uh, actually get a couple of graduates tonight, whose uh, family were very instrumental in, in performing the, uh, forming the uh, scholarship. And uh, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but Bryce Bernard, your great grandfather, Alvin Warren Sr., started the permanent scholarship. And today, your grandfather, Alfred Julia, still serves on that committee. Nolan Houston, your mother, has been serving on that committee for quite some time now. And we appreciate all their help. Uh, it's time consuming, but they seem to enjoy it because they've been doing it for a long time. We have 11 trustees on the committee. Some are retired school teachers from David Carter, some are regular just citizens, and then there are some business people. Uh, we get together a couple times a year and on this, on this fundraiser to help you get some scholarship money, which today is well needed. <laughs> um, tonight, the David Carter. Permanent Scholarship Committee is going to pass out 45 scholarships to lucky candidates tonight for the amount of over $50,000. Before we do that, I, like to, I always like to leave for a little bit of a quote, my favorite quote. It's uh, as you go through life. Never look down on anyone unless you're helping them off. Or remember that. Further ado, let's pass out some scholarships on it. Let's go, you are.
Ashka Grove. The John Sobolewski Memorial is awarded to Colin Nozick. The Philip the Longchamp Memorial is awarded to Brianna Mensa. The William Keyes Senior Memorial is awarded to Emily Kuczynski. Equipment 
scholarships go to Marissa Bowden. The Class of 1985 scholarship is awarded to Tabitha Brown. The Mercury Wire Scholarship is awarded to Brooke Peckin. The Cormier Jewelers and Zucas Hilltop Farm Scholarships go to Lily Fahey. The Cormier Family Scholarship goes to Colin Nozick. The class of 1968 scholarship goes to Emily Kuczynski. The C.R. Wilson Insurance Award goes to Marissa Bowden. Houston Pool Scholarship is awarded to Richard Laporte. The Health Care Provider Vision Source Scholarship is awarded to Madison Levitin. The Barnes Enterprises Pre-Owned Auto Sales Incorporated Scholarship is given to Jason Anderson. <laughs> the Michael Wong and Chef Sal Scholarship goes to Trinity Perkier.
Am I building up the proper amount of suspense? It's the time we've all been waiting for. I'd like to invite the chairman of our school committee, Mr. Jason Monette, Mr. Nathaniel Malone, our assistant principal and superintendent of schools, Dr. Paul Hockey, to rise as we prepare to present diplomas. Has no diplomas. <laughs> A little damn humor from your principal. <clears throat> At this time, I'll ask the class president to be awarded his diploma, Mr. Cameron Kenneth Doobie. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. 
show. Isaiah 
us for this joyous, joyous ceremonial occasion to honor these wonderful young people of the class of 2019. and our gymnasium area here in A building. Band, are you ready? 